Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to this channel, Hybrid Accounts. This is Hybrid Accounts and the subject is financial management. And today we're just going to take a look at our new topic called working capital management. In general, what is working capital? Working capital actually, uh, it's just like, uh, ju it's just like the lifeblood that makes your business going. You know, it's just like when we have a car, let's presume to have a car, all actually physical appearances of the car, but no oil. Without oil, without fuel, the car cannot be run. So that's what we call working capital. It's the capital that enables the company to work. So simply speaking, it's the capital that is available for conducting day-to-day -day operations of an organization. Without working capital, even if you have a lot of building, a lot of machines, you won't be able to pay the suppliers, you won't be able to pay employees, you won't be able to pay rent for other items. So it becomes impossible for you to run the business. That's why working capital comes into play. And so we really need to know how to manage it because it's essential, it's crucial for your business, right? So when speaking of working capital management, what are we concerned with? So we say, it is concerned with management of all aspects of both current assets and current liabilities. This is the first thing. Working capital simply involves current assets and current liabilities. But why? Why do we do that? So as to minimize the risk of insolvency while maximizing the return on assets. So simply speaking, working capital is done so as to balance between profitability and the liquidity. This is the main point. We try to strike a trade-off between liquidity and the profitability. You know, it's about risk and return here. By saying profits, we mean return. By saying liquidity, we mean the risk of failure to settle maturing obligations as they arise. So the company should try to balance them because why? If the company insists on liquidity, that means it will have a very high level of working capital, and that would limit our profitable investments. We would have to abandon profitable investments so as to be liquid. So the risk will be low, but also the return will be low. But when speaking of profitability, to be profitable, that means we have to, to, to invest in all profitable investments, leaving a little amount uh, of working capital and so increasing the risk. So our main point here is this one. This is our main point. We have liquidity, as I just told you, when we speak of liquidity, we mean that we would have low risk, we would have low risk and return, low risk and return, but also when speaking of profitability, when speaking of profitability, we would have high risk, also high return. So this is what we try to speak of, high risk and high return, while liquidity low risk and low, low return. So we really, need, we, we really need the low risk here. We need the low risk, but, but we do not need the low return. And, and for profitability, we need the high return, but not high risk. So we have to combine the two. That's why we say you have to strike a balance between profitability and liquidity. So it's something very crucial over here. All right, so working capital can be expressed, expressed in gross terms as well as in net terms. When speaking of gross working capital, we just refer to current assets without having subtracted current liabilities. That's what we call working capital gross. Current assets, examples of current assets that are common here, we we'll speak of inventory or stock, would we'll have trade receivables, after having sales sold goods to customers on credit, but also could have cash. So this could be an example of working capital in gross terms, just current assets. And these are just examples. But really, we usually have current liabilities that also arise in the short term and they are, that are also payable in the short term. You know, current assets can be realized in the short run, but current liabilities also can, can be realized and you have to pay them in the short term. So you ask yourself, you could have these current assets, but actually when you realize them into cash, you would have to convert them, you would have to pay them out so as to settle current liabilities. So to be very fair, working capital is defined as the net of current assets of our current liabilities. So as to know what will really remain with after having collected money and paying actually and settling these short-term maturing obligations. So that's why working capital can also be expressed in net terms. So networking capital equals to current assets minus current liabilities. 
on this current liabilities could include our trade payables. That means you have bought goods from suppliers on credit and then uh, you have to pay them in due time, but also could have overdraft or any other short-term bank or any other short-term loans, just like that. So uh, these are just examples of current liabilities. So generally, when, when you're just working capital, we usually refer to networking capital. So in case the question hasn't been specific, Working capital simply means current assets minus current liabilities. Because that's the scenario you really encounter in the business, right? All right, so I could just check out objectives of working capital management. Why? What is the objective of working capital management? So the main goal or objective of working capital management is to get the balance of current assets and current liabilities right, to, get the, to strike the right balance of current assets and current liabilities, so as to strike a balance between profitability and liquidity, just as I stated above. So you have to know what are these current assets, what should be the current liabilities. At this current liabilities level, what should be the current assets, just like that. Right. So, as I told you above, profitability comes at the expense of liquidity. That's why we usually say you have to strike a balance. If you need more profit, that means you will have to invest more into profitable investment, leaving less and um, less funds into working capital. And leaving less funds into working capital actually would take you into the risk of, of running out of cash, the risk of failing to pay to settle maturing obligations as they arise. And so profitability comes at the expense of liquidity. As more funds have to be put into profitable ventures, leaving little buffer to meet maturing obligations. But also liquidity comes at the expense of profitability. Why? Because if you need to be liquid, you have to, you're supposed to have a high level of working capital. A high level of working capital means more funds have to be locked to provide cover for maturing obligations while leaving out profitable investments. So that's the case, and that's why we say a trade-off is necessary. A stri striking a balance between profitability and the liquidity is very, very crucial. So you have to be very careful when dealing with such matters, all right? Right now, uh, we can just go to the roles of working capital management, but I think I could just end up here and then we'll come to the roles of working capital management. That's what follows in the next video. Thank you very much and uh, until next time.